Obesity affects 40% of adults and 19% of children in the United States and accounts for $186 billion in healthcare spending each year. Sugary beverages are thought to be one of the major drivers of the obesity epidemic. These drinks, think soda and sports drinks, are the largest single source of added sugars for Americans and contribute, on average, more than 150 added calories a day to our diets. For these reasons, reducing sugary beverage consumption has been a significant focus of public health intervention. Most efforts have focused on sodas, but not juice. Juice, for some reason, gets a pass. It's not clear why. This is Healthcare Triage News. Americans drink a lot of juice. The average adult drinks 6.6 .6 gallons per year. More than half of preschool-aged children, ages two to five, drink juice regularly, a proportion that, unlike for sodas, has not budged in recent decades. These children consume, on average, 10 ounces per day, almost twice the amount recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics. Parents tend to associate juice with healthfulness, are unaware of its relationship to weight gain, and are reluctant to restrict it from their child's diet. After all, 100% fruit juice, sold in handy individual servings, has been marketed as a natural source of vitamins and calcium. Department of Agricultural guidelines state that up to half of fruit servings can be provided in the form of 100% fruit juice and recommend drinking fortified orange juice for the vitamin D. Some brands of juice are even marketed to infants. Governmental programs designed to provide healthy food for children, such as the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, which we've covered on this show, offer juice for kids. This most likely makes a difference as children in the program are more likely to exceed the recommended daily fruit juice limit than those who are similarly poor but not enrolled in the program. Despite all the marketing and government support, fruit juices contain limited nutrients and tons of sugar. In fact, one 12 ounce glass of orange juice contains 10 teaspoons of sugar, which is roughly the same as a can of Coke. Drinking fruit juice is not the same as eating whole fruit. While eating fruit is associated with the reduced risk of diabetes, drinking fruit juice is associated with the opposite. Juices contain more concentrated sugar and calories and less fiber, which is what makes you feel full. Because juices consume quickly, it is more likely than whole fruit to contribute to excess carbohydrate intake. For example, researchers found that adults who drank apple juice before a meal felt hungrier and ate more calories than those who started with an apple instead. Children who drink juice instead of eating fruit may similarly feel less full and may be more likely to continue to snack throughout the day. Juice may also be a gateway beverage. Infants who drank more juice at one year of age also drank more sugary beverages, including more soda, in their school age years. Children's excessive consumption of juice has been linked to an increased risk of weight gain, shorter stature, and cavities. Even in the absence of weight gain, sugar consumption worsens blood pressure and increases cholesterol. It's tempting to minimize the negative contributions of juice to our diets because it's natural, because it contains vitamins. Studies that support this view exist, but many are biased and have been questioned. And we doubt that you'd take a multivitamin if it contained 10 teaspoons of sugar. There's no evidence that juice improves health. It should be treated like other sugary beverages, which are fine to have periodically if you want them, but not because you need them. Parents should instead serve water and focus on trying to increase children's intake of whole fruit. Juice should no longer be served regularly in daycares and schools. Public health efforts should challenge governmental guidelines that equate fruit juice with whole fruit as they most likely fuel the false perception that drinking fruit juice is good for health. It's much easier to prevent obesity than it is to reverse it. We need to teach kids how to eat healthier when they're young so that they develop good habits to carry on for the rest of their life. In the last decade or so, we have succeeded in recognizing the harms of sugary beverages like soda. We can't keep pretending the juice is different. Special thanks to Erica Chang and Lauren Feichner, who co-wrote the op-ed with me from which this episode was adapted. Do you like the show? Always helps if you like or subscribe right down there. And another good way for you to support the show is a subscription service called Patreon.com, where you, the viewer, can directly support on anything you like, like a dollar a month, more if you like, but if you don't want to, totally fine as well. Go to Patreon.com slash Healthcare Triage to see how you can help. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz, Crafty Geek, and Jonathan Dunn, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam. As always, Go to htmerch.com to pick up good healthcare triage merch and my book, The Bad Food Bible, still on sale in stores. <laughs>